Hi, this is Jim DiGiovanni with DiGiovanni Design. Thank you for checking out this video and my channel. Uh, before we get started, I'll just do the obligatory. Um, if you like the stuff and you want to find out more about it, I try to release a tutorial about once a week and uh, like and subscribe. That obviously helps. It, it's uh, a motivator for me to continue to do this. And hopefully you find this, uh, this content useful. Now, uh, this video in particular today is a tutorial using uh, Adobe Illustrator to build a pattern that is then uploaded to Spoonflower. And if you're not familiar with Spoonflower, I was not familiar with it until about two weeks ago. It is a print on demand site that specifically does not t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that, not swag, but um, things like housewares, um, wallpapers, sheets, bedding, all those kind of like uh, fabric. So it's not something where you would do a like a funny t-shirt design thing. It's more like you're doing patterns. Uh, or in textile things. And, and doing textile patterns in Illustrator is really fun and interesting. And it's a lot of sort of problem solving. So I, I'm really enjoying doing that. Um, the one thing I'll show you say here is that um, the pattern that I build, I build it to make sure that it works as a pattern, but then I just sort of manually build it to the shape that you'll see at the end. And uh, you'll see how that, that works. And the reason why that is, is it's a way to more control uh, how it's uploaded to Spoonflower because Spoonflower actually does the pattern tiling itself. So you don't have to build a com uh, complete Illustrator pattern. You can just kind of build the template for it so that it works the way you want it to work. Um, finally, uh, if you do do a lot of Merch by Amazon stuff or upload to TeePublic and Redbubble and all the other POD sites like I do, you might want to check out my videos and uh, on Instant Vintage, which is my uh, Photoshop plugin that automatically converts sizes for uh, print on demand. So it'll it'll convert your designs into T-shirts and hoodies and pop sockets and KDP books and all the different KDP sizes. So it's really useful. It also makes them gives it a vintage fade and it has three different levels of fade. So check those videos out there here on the site as well uh, on my YouTube channel. And I thank you very much for watching. So let's get started. Thanks. Just going to start with a with a 1000 by 1000 pixel um, document, a single artboard. I always use artboards. In this case, I'm just going to use a single one. Um, and create, and I'm going to build this in a really simple way and sort of explain it as I go. Uh, now, um, just so you're working with the same kind of settings I'm working with, uh, if you go to Windows and you go to your workspace and use Essentials Classic, I'm going to reset Essentials Classic. That's what I like to start with. It's sort of my default here. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring up my layers palette here because Everyone should always be using layers. It's just really the only way to work as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I'm just going to create a layer that says background layer, and it's just going to be my sort of default background color. Let's just make it a, a sort of a medium gray so it's a little different than the actual background of my artboards. And I'll lock it and I'll turn it off. So I'm, cre I'm creating this sort of diamond pattern, um, or I should say triangle pattern. Um, and so I'm going to start with creating a polygon as my basic triangle. All right, so I'm going to move over to the tools menu and click on the where it says rectangle tool and I'm going to choose the polygon tool here. And one other thing I want to mention is that uh, when I'm building these because I want everything to sort of line up because I'm building a, a pattern, uh, I'm going to make sure I have snapping on. So you want to go down here to your view, snap to grid. And I also have smart guides on. One other thing I want to mention, I keep forgetting these things, is uh, if you pull up, you're going to pull up your Align tool because you're going to need that a lot as well. So Windows, Align, and I'm going to bring that over here. And for now, I'm going to put my Pathfinder and my Transform tools over here too because I'll probably end up using those as well. Um, so you're going to set your, your Align to um, Artboard, Align to Artboard for now. Okay, so now with my Polygon tool selected, my Align to Artboard setup uh, and my snapping on, I'm just going to click in the center. I'm going to option click. I'm on a Mac here. Option click. Click. Uh, radius is 500 pixels and three sides. Okay. And this is just sort of our starting point. Now, the first thing I am going to do is align it to the artboard. So I will align horizontal and align vertical, right? And the, the artboard is sort of important, but it's not completely important. So I'm just going to kind of snap it into this artboard. So I, wanted, I don't want this to be a triangle. I want it to be a stroke. 
Um, so I'm going to change this into a black fill and then swap that into being a stroke, okay? And then I am going to pull up my stroke palette here, strokes, and I'm going to expand it out here to show the options. Let's make it uh, 30 point, but I, I don't want the pointy ends on here, so I'm going to adjust the miter limit. And I'm going to align the strokes to center, but I'm going to set the miter limit to one. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that um, we have this sort of flat ends on, on the points. And, and the, the reason why is that is because we're lining a lot of stuff up and you're, otherwise you're going to get some overlap. Right. And if you notice, if I line it on the inside, I don't get I, I don't get that. And I'm wondering if I can do it this way. But, you know, I'm sort of learning this as we're going. So let's just say we're doing this. I'm going to increase the the uh, the stroke width a little bit. I want this to be a little bit fatter and then I'm going to end up continuing to sort of adjust the size here to make it work. It doesn't have to sit on this artboard. I'm just kind of using this as my template. OK, so there's my triangle. Very simple. Right now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to uh, make a copy of it and reduce the size and rotate it. So uh, I'm going to use my scale tool and I can click it here or I can go under object transform scale and it'll bring up my scale menu and I'm going to make the uniform scale of 50%. I can preview it here, right? And I'm going to make a copy, right? And now I'm going to take this copy and I'm going to rotate it by holding down the shift key and just kind of dragging the rotation around it. And now I'm going to change my uh, alignment uh, a little bit. So instead of aligning it to the artboard, I'm going to align it to the selection. So in this, so now we're going to take these two selections and I'm going to align them both to the bottom. See, and now that snaps to that position, right? So now we have uh, one triangle that's actually four triangles. And now I'm going to subdivide this a little bit more, and I may end up playing with the stroke here a little bit. It feels like it might be a little thick. Okay, so I've reduced it down to 45 for the sake of this demonstration. Now, I want to actually split this into a couple other uh, patterns here. So I'm going to take my, my line segment tool and I'm going to just, I'm going to turn my preview off for a second. So Command Y. Because I just want to make sure I'm, I'm lining it up here and I'm going to drag down. It's not quite lined up and I'm going to drag it to about the center there. But then again, I'm going to line these up. Uh, once this is done, I'm going to do the alignment again. And then I'm going to take this and then I'm going to draw a line from the end of this point. Let me zoom in. The end of this point to this corner. So I'm trying to get these to sort of line up here. And then I will mirror it. So that's another transform tool. So I'm going to select this stroke here. Object, transform, reflect. Not mirror, but reflect. And make a copy of it. And I could drag it over or I could just tab it over here like this. Why don't I get them to line up? See, this is not lining up exactly here. So now we need to fix this. But let me just take a look at these lines. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I just want everything to line up. So I'm going to take this section here that I just sort of peace sign thing. I'm going to group it and then I'm going to do the align again. So this time I'm going to select everything and align everything on center, right? So now that's aligned like that. Now I'm going to take this same group here and I'm going to reflect that again, object, transform, reflect. And this time I'm going to reflect it horizontally and make a copy and just kind of tab it down to this point here to see how it's lining up. And I really want them to just sort of, I want to make this as clean as possible. So I'm going to line it up so that it's exactly in the same spot. Got to make a few adjustments there at the end. But this is basically, we're building out this first shape. And then I'm going to take my peace sign here thing on top and I'm going to just, this time I'm just going to drag a copy. I, I first hold down the shift and then, and then I grab the option and it makes a copy. And you can see how my, um, my cursor kind of gets the double cursor there, so that's, I'm going to release that. Now it's made a copy, and I'm just going to move that over this time. Probably, I think what I could do, let's just try this, is if I select this and this, and I, I try to align them right, yeah, this way it just kind of locks that in. And then the same thing here, I'm going to take the same one, and I could reflect it, or I could just click and drag, whatever kind of works better for you, holding down the Shift and Option key, and just click and drag it over there. And now we have this sort of, cool looking geometric shape. And I, I could take this apart. I can reduce the, uh, the strokes on it. I just want to 
before I actually kind of finalize this part of it, I just want to kind of zoom in and take a look and make sure things are lining up. Uh, from this standpoint, it looks good, but if I reduce the size of the stroke, I just want to make sure everything is still behaving itself. That looks pretty good. That might be a place to go. And so you can sort of start to modify these things and, and do all sort of interesting things. This kind of like has a little bit of a sci-fi look to it as well. And, you know, part of this stuff is just craftsmanship. You know, you just want to do a good job because you, you want to be proud of the work that you're doing, you know. Let's take a look at that shape. Okay, so that's a pretty tight-looking um, sort of geometric shape, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of it because I want to, I, I'm, I'm going to basically expand this into a single shape. But before I do that, I want to make sure I still have one available if I want to go back and edit it. Like I want to change the, if I, I want to change the color or I want to change the width or something like that. I want to have a copy. So I'm going to call this one, um, let me just make a duplicate here. And then I'll name this one safety. And I'll turn it off. Okay. Now I've still got my my object here. And this way I can adjust it. Let's just say I want to make it. Now I'm going to go ahead and select object, expand, and then expand the fill in the stroke. See, now it's an object, right? But this is a little messy. So then we go into our pathfinder. We select uh, unite. And now this becomes a single object. So here's our base object for our pattern. There's a long way to get there, but there you go. So I like this object here and I'm going to select it. And now if you haven't used the pattern tool, it's really cool. Once you start playing around with it, you get some really cool stuff. And I'm just going to have this sort of snap to this size here. So I'm going to uh, unlock constrain and I'm going to set my size to 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And I'm also going to so have it so that it's centered on zero and on zero. So now it's exactly a thousand pixels and it's exactly inside the artboard. So now I know everything sort of snapped into place. So let's just take a look at the pattern first and then we can decide on maybe some colors or something like that. But I just want to do the pattern first. All right. So the pattern here is uh, again, object, pattern, make, and it just kind of builds this pattern for you, right? Uh, and my sizes are what I want them to be. Now, um, I don't want it to be a totally square grid, so I'm going to have it be a, a, a brick by column grid like this, I think. Let's see what that looks like. And now I'm going to um, adjust the width to, let's do 750. So I see when you work with round numbers, you sort of get a nice, you, you, you can just use basic math and, and you can uh, control your, your image a little bit better. So this is a clean tiling repeating pattern. And just by playing around with these different these different like hex by row, hex by column, you can really come up with a lot of different interesting looking patterns just by kind of playing around with stuff. Um, if, I, if I adjusted the height as well, let's just see what that looks like, 750. Okay, so there's, there's our pattern. We can sort of see what that's gonna look like. So before I make this my final pattern, what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, back out of it here and let's just pick some colors just as an example just for this, uh, for this demonstration. Okay, so here's our, our yellow geometric shape on this green pattern. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go uh, Object, Pattern, Make, and I'm gonna call this um, yellow triangle, see brick by column, the way I was doing it before, like that, and I'm gonna offset the width by 750, okay? And I am going to set my copies to just the maximum nine by nine, just to make the pattern. Okay. And then see, it's already made the pattern there. I haven't even clicked. Okay. See, you can see yellow triangle geometric right there. Right. So now I know this pattern works, right? Okay. So now that I know that my, my pattern idea works, this object works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a box. I'm just going to, create the, the repeating tiles just by myself 
um, so that I can upload it to, um, to Spoonflower. All right, so, and you can do this a couple different ways. This is just the way I choose to do it. I'm gonna select my object. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a copy of it by, again, holding down Shift Option and dragging it. I'm gonna snap it to that intersection, and then I'm gonna move it over. And basically what, I, what I'm trying to make sure is happening is that we, we've got, um, that the pattern is repeating itself properly. So that's gonna be right on that diamond there. See that, that point there? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this should tile itself perfectly now. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export the artboard. And the reason why I'm exporting the artboard is so that the, the area outside the artboards are, are ignored. File, export, export for screens. And this is this the artboard. We're just gonna call this green diamonds. Technically it's yellow diamonds. And I'm gonna output it to my desktop. I'm gonna do it at 200%. So it's, it's gonna create a 2000 pixel square file, but it's gonna be the artboard only. Export to artboards, okay. So this should tile perfectly. Now let's upload it to uh, Spoonflower and see what that looks like. Okay, now, so now that we're at, I went to spoonflower.com, I've logged into my account. I'm gonna to go to design library and add design. And it's gonna ask you to select your file. It's saying you can get, do a TIFF, JPEG, PNG, or GIF. Um, I don't recommend GIFs, uh, but because you're, you're limiting the amount of colors you can have. A TIFF file is not gonna have transparency. JPEGs won't have transparency. PNGs do have transparency. So if you're doing something with just a transparent background, I recommend using PNGs. Um, JPEGs are fine for other things. So I'm gonna choose my file, go to my desktop, choose the yellow diamond, okay? Click the uh, ownership details, upload the file. This takes a minute. Okay, so now it's uploaded the file and we can see that the file is tiling the, the way I wanted it to or a, a way that I wanted it to. I could do it a couple different ways. Um, you've got a couple different choices with your repeat pattern. That's not gonna work because I have a background. It's sort of the same thing we were talking about earlier. So you have some choices as far as like how, how your design is gonna show. This is the way I wanted it and I can say smaller if I wanna reduce what it's gonna look like, smaller still, so you can get to look and see what the pattern is gonna look like. It's an interesting looking pattern. Uh, then you can go, if you're actually gonna buy something, you can choose your fabric and all of that and add it to the cart. But for now, I'm just gonna say, um, and I can put in additional details and tags and stuff like that, and you choose how you want it to display and all that. But, um, I want to put in the details and I just want to say make public. Now you can say um, view all products. And now, which is really cool, and I, I really think they do a great job with the, the mock-ups on this, you can get a good idea of what this is going to look like. Now this might be a little bit bold for someone's house, but it's got kind of a cool, almost a sort of a 60s look to it. But I really like, this looks great. I mean, look look how nice these, um, these mock-ups look. I mean, that looks like it's really there. I mean, they did a really nice job. They even have the, the, the background fabric colors and stuff like this. So you kind of get a good idea of, you know, all right, this looks good. Like a shower, like curtains and, and sheet sets and throw blankets. Uh, I gotta give them a lot of credit for the way the artists that did the mock-ups for them, they did a really nice job on this. But uh, you know, even your, even your you know, COVID mask or whatever, you, you can kind of do something interesting there. But, um, just kind of gives you an idea of, you know, how to create these patterns and how to upload them. And then if you want to order some yourself, if you're doing some sort of custom custom decorations or something, uh, or if you just want to design your own patterns for your house, or you want to sell them to other people, this is a, a way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.